Welcome to the Tech One Two Podcast. I'm your host, John Campus. Today we'll be discussing co-managed IT. I'm also joined today with Andrew Beauchantine. Hey, hey John. <laughs> hey, what's up, man? Doing good, doing good. Thank you very much for inviting me to this awesome podcast. Man, I love it. Thank you. I mean, the knowledge that we're going to be able to share today is something that I know so many businesses out there need. So Absolutely. Uh, very happy to have you in the in the studio today. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited as well. So we got some great content today on co-managed IT. It's uh, something that we talk to our clients all the time about. Um, I'm just curious. I'm going I'm to start off right away with a question because I know I know this is a good one for you. A lot of a lot of our listeners are probably wondering what exactly is co-managed IT. Well, co-managed IT it comes in many different flavors for organizations, but many organizations have an internal IT department or someone who's responsible for IT. Working with an external party to help them co-manage the environment really helps them bring a lot of benefits to the organization, which we'll talk about today, but it's really about just improving the overall technology for an organization by utilizing a partner uh, as part of the IT program. Okay, great. So, for example, if there's certain skill sets that a team might not have, that would be a great time to bring in a partner to help them out in those, those areas. Absolutely. I mean, that's very common. That's a common um, a common issue that organizations face, either due to capacity or just due to skill set. You know, there's so much that's going on. There's so many risks that are happening out there, cybersecurity risks, cloud transformations, and organizations may just not have the time to do the things that they really want them to do to give them that competitive edge. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for clarifying that. I know that that's probably the burning question when someone saw this topic today. Well, co-managed IT it sounds cool, but what is it? So thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, co-management, it's really about utilizing a partner. You know, it's we deal with customers all the time. They'll have an internal IT team, and they really want that trust and that partner to work with in order to help them achieve the goals that they have, you know, to really help them give them that competitive edge and to grow and improve the overall technology. So co-managed IT is something we're seeing a lot of. Yep. Um, just over the last year, a lot more of than we've seen in previous years, and we expect that that's just going to continue. Absolutely. I mean, just from, you know, we've been doing this a long time, and uh, there, was a, there was a time when, when a lot of our clients had no clue what even managed services were. Um, we know that's long since changed, um, but they're asking those questions now. I, I know I need to be compliant. I know I need to have IT governance. I know that um, I need to make sure my infrastructure is, is, is stable and that we're doing the things that we can do with technology, but um, do I need to have that all internal or can I find a partner that can give us either all or some of that to augment the team that I currently have? Well, I mean, some, you know, from what we've seen out in the market, um, both, you know, SME, small, medium-sized enterprises, mid-market, um, where it's really a decision organizations need to, um, need to make because, you know, at, at a point in time, it was always I had my IT guy. Right. And my IT guy, it was expected that that IT guy would literally do everything. Mm-hmm. But as time has gone on and this technology has evolved, it's become more, much more complex. So organizations that may have internal IT teams that are operating and they're maintaining the business um, the way that the business needs currently, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's aligning with what the business needs in the future. So it's really looking at uh, buy versus build as well. You know, there's a lot of challenges that organizations face just in staffing and recruiting. I mean, like we do, right? Right. It's not. It's not. It's not easy to staff and recruit for certain positions that you have. So, if you're a business that has an internal IT team today, mm-hmm. and um, you may not be in the business of IT, but you know you have that need internally, what better way to extend the capabilities and capacity of your team through a trusted partner? Absolutely, absolutely, for sure. So, uh, gone are the days of the of the generalist, right? being able to handle the entire environment. Absolutely. I mean, when we see that with, um, you know, IT specifically, it's like a general practitioner. You wouldn't go to your general practitioner and ask him to do open heart surgery on you. Well, maybe, (laughs) maybe maybe you, maybe you would. Well, what's that going to result in? (laughs) Exactly. I mean, the outcome is probably not going to work in your favor. So um, when you're looking at an IT generalist and the IT teams, these teams, these internal teams are looking for help. Sure. You know, in having management and executives, C-suite, support the initiative of co-managed IT, some of our most successful relationships have been with internal, internal teams that we're just extending and augmenting the efforts that 
that they have because we truly win together and we lose together. Right. So when you break down any barriers of communication and you improve the collaboration between an internal team and an external team, such as a managed service provider or any other type of external team, and you uh, you bridge any type of bridge it, bridge the gap, mm-hmm. then you can really improve the overall collaboration, communication, and the end result and outcome for the organization. Absolutely, and something you said there actually, um, you know, spurred something in, in, in my mind. Uh, are we? You know, I, I know I've been seeing it, but I'd love to get your read on it. I mean, we're seeing more often than not more specialization required, right? Yeah. Not not just one size fits all. There there are definitely many more needs than organizations have ever faced that require areas of specialization. Whereas before you could get away with somebody that had a rudimentary knowledge about your network systems and was great at, at help desk support. But today with the growing need for cybersecurity, we're finding that's simply not the case. Wouldn't you agree? I would absolutely agree. I mean, just the risk, so risk alone associated with trying to protect and safeguard the organization is far greater than an organization even um, fathomed. They just never expected that there would be so right. much risk with connecting your systems into a digital environment. And they may have a team of fantastic p- uh, help desk people, right. you know, level one, level two support. Mm-hmm. But those same staff members, it could either be just due to the capacity, they don't have the time because they're supporting users, who's protecting the back of the house? Sure. You know, when we look at the threats that organizations face today, it's not just the external threats, it's the internal threats that organizations face. Unknowingly, unknowingly, users present some of the biggest challenges. Right. So imagine having an internal team today that's involved in the day-to-day operational support of the organization. Who's going to drive the training, the strategy, the safeguards, implement any type of mitigation required in order to protect the organization from any type of cyber attack? It's probably not those same people. But what we've seen are those same people, they're great at doing what they were doing. Mm-hmm. They they absolutely love working with organizations that can really, I mean, imagine, think of the peace of mind that they now have. This sure. is something that troubles them. We know this. Mm-hmm. Now, whether or not they, they voice this concern to, the, to, to their leadership, we know that this is a concern that likely keeps them up at night. Well, I'm responsible for IT. I'm responsible for fixing the person's computer. I'm responsible for fixing the printer. I'm responsible for keeping the network up and running. I'm now responsible for some cloud technology. I'm now responsible for maintaining risk. There's just too much. Right. So the specialization is absolutely required because it's not just generalist IT, general IT that you need to worry about um, anymore. You have distributed workforces. You have all these additional risks. You have compliance. Internal, internal teams likely cannot handle that unless it's a, it's a very deep and um, specialized team. Yeah, so you, you mentioned compliance, um, a, an area where I think a lot of, a lot of it's, it's a great term, but IT governance, can you tell us a little bit about what IT governance means and why that is so difficult to find in, in even your best uh, general IT team? Well, you know, IT isn't always responsible for every piece of technology that organizations use. Mm-hmm. You know, you hear of shadow IT. Shadow IT is technology that's being introduced without the knowledge of anybody who's in an IT role has. Right. It's so simple to log into a site, download a trial or set up a trial, 14-day risk-free trial, and now your information is being, uh, your company data is now being stored on servers and cloud technologies that you don't even know about. So having a good IT governance plan where IT is responsible for all aspects of IT, not just, again, operational, but also strategic, it's important to really help that organization drive through a good IT governance program right. to help align the technology with what that organization needs today, manage and mitigate the risk, but also align it with what that organization is going to need in the future. Sure. So by governing and controlling, having full control over IT and technology through that's funneled through the IT role or IT department mm-hmm. is something that organizations uh, implement when implemented properly see some tremendous benefits of efficiencies, productivity, uh, uh, integrity of data, communications of systems, and just overall growth. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for, uh, you know, thanks for mentioning that because um, I think that's an area, you know, that's obviously a term everybody's talked about, but 
Um, the reason why I asked it is because that's, I think, what, what I'm seeing most frequently when, when we're talking to clients, the more and more request of just that, IT governance. Look, we know that technology touches all aspects of, of our business. Um, in addition to that, we're seeing a lot more requirements placed upon our clients and organizations that we're working with from their clients, right? So their clients are now being pressed to say, hey, what do you do in terms of policy in these areas? And so it, a lot of that's pushing upstream to to their team to say, hey, we got we to answer these, these questionnaires, mm -hmm. these security questionnaires, or, or it, and if we can't, we're potentially losing that relationship. So um, I, one of, that's, that's why I asked it because it goes back to what you talked about. A lot of times it's not with ill intention that, that, that a, a team member, especially a dedicated staff member, an IT member uh, of the organization, it's not with ill intention that they're maybe not doing these things, but because they are now faced with something that maybe has them out of their depths, they're really trying to figure out how do I do this for the organization. I mean, absolutely. When you look at just the supply chain risks that organizations face today, and I know we're not talking too much about supply chain <laughs> today, but it is real. Right. And it is an area that is a gap that organizations face that they may not be able to fulfill internally. So again, aligning with the right partner is something that is critical to the success of the organization. So the supply chain risk is, you know, I'm, I'm working with a partner. Um, partner has a certain security posture that they want all organizations that they work with to also adhere to. Right. But what happens in most scenarios? Most scenarios, the organizations do not align with that same security posture. So what happens? Your biggest client, biggest partner now sends you a questionnaire. And now you're scrambling. Yep. You're scrambling because you don't know how to answer it. You know, you, your, biggest, your biggest revenue generator is at Jeopardy right now because Correct. they've given you a timeline. Well, who's going to implement all that? Mm -hmm. Now you have this internal IT team. And again, we love working with internal IT. Sure. We absolutely do. IT directors, IT managers, uh, level one through three support, um, you know, developers. We love working with them. But they have certain things that they are responsible for. Risk and compliance may not be part of that. Sure. You may not have a chief security officer, a compliance officer within the organization. Well, how do you how do you fulfill that need now that your clients and partners have now mandated that you need to adhere to that. Well, what happens? Most companies, they, they'll they get a questionnaire. They don't know how to answer it. They're just going to an answer it blindly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then, God forbid, something happens. Yep. Something happens within our organization. That's what, you know, we, we see the co-management side of it. It's, I mean, from a capacity perspective, from a risk perspective, cybersecurity, and just extending that team um, is something that, we're seeing growing so rapidly yep. within all types of businesses. This isn't just the fortune size organization. Right. Not just mid market or enterprise, no, this even is, small, medium sized businesses. Exactly. Because again, even a small, medium sized business, even if they had an IT role, mm -hmm. or maybe this IT role was a shared role with some other role, it was the accountant. But now, yeah. let's say Bill uh, or Jane were the best at IT, and now they became the IT person as well. Right. As you can imagine, and organizations have now seen this more and more, that person cannot fulfill all the obligations of IT. Absolutely. IT is not just, you know, person under the computer plugging in, plugging in the com or person under a desk plugging in a computer and getting it set up. It now extends far beyond that and has become um, a responsibility that organizations need to address. Mm hmm from a liability perspective and Absolutely. exposure perspective. I was just about to say that there's a lot more at stake than mm -hmm. ever before. Saying that you can do something and not actually doing it, mm -hmm. that presents a real risk to most organizations. And from an ownership standpoint, from a key stakeholder and decision maker standpoint, there's no doubt that business, that's what keeps them up at night. How am I going to be at risk and how can I be compliant? We talk to clients all the time. We had a meeting last week where it was that was the biggest concern. We're, we're growing. We want to scale. How do we scale from 100 to 200 when the reality is our clients are going to be putting more demands on us to make sure that we're compliant? And how can I confidently say that we're, we're able to be compliant? So that brings me to a really important question. What, are, what would you identify are the key advantages to going uh, to co-management? And perhaps follow up to that is, what uh, what what is the identifier of a really good co-managed partner? 
So what, what am I going to get as, as an organization and what do I need to be looking for in, in, in that right partner? Well, first off, I mean, with any type of partnership, there needs to be trust. I mean, you need to understand what the core capabilities are of, the, of that organization or partner yep. and have they done it before. You don't want to look at somebody and start working with a partner who hasn't done it before and it doesn't have a proven track record. There's many organizations out there that may say co-managed IT, but in all reality, it mm-hmm. might even be just more of a break-fix approach. So it's truly alignment. How, how, how much of an alignment, how much alignment will the partner provide to you with the internal team so that the teams feel that they're truly an extension of each other and they understand that they win together and they lose together? Because, again, if the internal team or the external team, the co-managed team, um, is failing, it's not, oh, they failed. It's we all failed. Right. That's, you have to look at ownership and extreme ownership from your partner to understand that the role that they play into the IT program and how important it is for the organization. Yeah, a lot at stake, right? There's so much at sta- stake. And if it's a finger-pointing game, we fi- you find yourself in a situation where you're having conversations and the partner saying, well, that's your team. And it's not saying it's us. Right. It's a it's a we conversation. It's mm-hmm. not a me. It's a we conversation. It's not oh they did something wrong and we did some we didn't do anything wrong. It's got to have extreme ownership because that's what you would expect if you were to hire all these people, a team of 20, 30, 40, 50 people, whatever that number is, that's now providing you the specializations that you need. You would never expect them to not take ownership and be accountable for their actions. Mm-hmm. So it's truly being part of a um, part of a single team and looking at that. Um, when we look at opportunities where organizations will often find it, let's just look at it from the IT side. Sure. First. I'm in an IT role. Yep. Um, in a organization, uh, it could be a law firm, any type of business, any mm-hmm. type of business, manufacturing, healthcare, regardless of size. Regardless of size. Right. I'm expected to operate IT. Mm-hmm. Now, whether I'm a team of one, three, five, 10, 20, our, my team, I am now responsible for operating IT. All things that technology. Everything IT. Right. I mean, it's literally everything. Anything that, you know, is has any type of technology associated with it. it Even new out. applications, right? New applications. Comes out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and not only new applications, now we're expected to sit down budgeting. We're, we're expected to sit down to manage risk. Mm-hmm. All these things that perhaps we weren't equipped to do. Previously, right, and I'm also responsible for supporting the operation 24 hours a day. Yeah, so no downtime, no downtime, and I'm expected to be available 24 hours a day. Let's just say I'm a single IT director. Mm-hmm. I'm an I'm an IT manager, and I'm supporting an organization of 100 people. I'm responsible for that. Yeah, common, I'm, commonly what we'd see, yeah. right, for an organization that size. Exactly. Who's going to handle my PTO? Who's responsible when I'm out of the office? Planned office or unexpected? I need someone that I can rely on. Right. So a one of the um, most immediate benefits that an organization is going to face from an IT role is now they have an extension. They've just now increased their capacity. Mm-hmm. So let's say that IT manager that normally works 8 to 5, but we all know anybody in IT, you don't only work 8 to 5. But now I have a team that can operate for me 24 hours a day. Mm-hmm. So instead of having to wake up at 2 a.m., when something happens because I'm worried about when the people are going to come in at eight and I'm always going to be stressed out and worried about what's happening in the environment and what threats are taking place, who's trying to hack my network, you know, is the serv- are the servers up and running? I now have a team that can identify, triage, and resolve those problems for me. So as an IT role, just I've now ex- a, um, extended my capacity and capabilities of what our IT team now does. And I can be, it's more predictable for me. Right. From an organization, that's just one, a very common one that we would look at. From, a, from an organization perspective, you know, some of the areas is, you know, we want to migrate to the cloud. Mm-hmm. We have skills. We have, we have a team today that manages everything for us fantastic. Right. The operations. Day All on-prem, operation. though. On-prem. Right. There's a skill required for that. Mm-hmm. So – from an organization perspective, we're on premise today, which on premise may make works for many organizations. Still may make sense. Yeah, there could be a hybrid, there could be a cloud only. But as an organization, I may now be limited to the core competencies and knowledge of my internal team, which would prevent me from looking at other options because when cloud comes up as a conversation point, well, cloud is not an option. Right. 
because wow. there may not be the understanding or knowledge behind what it takes to properly migrate. Exactly. So because they don't have the knowledge for that, it doesn't mean that they're not good people, right? right? And they don't they don't know technology. Or that it might not be a good option for that business. Exactly. They just might not have the skill set capable of delivering. Yeah. And you know, you 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 promote and you want to implement the things that you're knowledgeable knowledgeable about. Sure. Right? If I'm good at doing something, I'm like, yeah, cloud is fantastic. If I'm good at, you know, uh, a Windows operating system, that's the best operating system that exists. But it's really about expanding the knowledge outside of the four walls of the office. Right. So from a leadership perspective, an organization really needs to look at if they've made this investment in internal IT and they're like, you know what, this is the approach that we're taking. We have internal IT and it's fantastic and they're doing a great job. You know, they do uh, great desk side support. Everybody knows each other. They're very reliable. Everybody loves them. Yeah, everybody loves them. Right. But we have to elevate because if you don't elevate your IT program, you know, at some point it becomes stagnant. Sure. And if it's not moving upwards, the only way is down. Mm-hmm. So organizations, this is something that even recently when we went out and met with a client and they had all this equipment, it was aged. Mm-hmm. Remember, and they yeah. had they had these issues and challenges. They wanted a distributed workforce. And people during the pandemic had to come to the office. Yeah. Not because that was a policy. It's that, well, it's either they no alternative. or not. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and that's what happens. Things oftentimes may get dated. Mm-hmm. Um, they they might not be moving things forward, and they could fall behind to the competition as well. And absolutely, to be one hundred percent clear, it where we see more often than not is it's not with malintent. The these are individuals that really believe and want to move push the organization forward, and in most cases are trying to do the investigation necessary to offer those al- uh, alternatives. But what we see more often than not happen, and we see this happen more frequently, and it's really impactful for the business, is the business then is limited based on their ability to research, how quickly they can research, their ability to, to take that chance, make that move. And so oftentimes what we're seeing when it comes to a co-management side of it is they do these things really great, but maybe not these areas. So how can we bring in a partner that can help us in that area? Mm -hmm. So what I definitely heard is redundancy, strategy, and the ability to take advantage of technologies that may not be either their current team may not be aware of or uh, they may have never seen before. Yeah. I mean, things are changing across the industries. I mean, and it's not very specific, but across technology as a whole, if you were to look at technology 10 years ago to today, right. I mean, it's drastically changed, and that's only continuing to change. So uh, staying up to date on the, um, you know, the, the trends of technology and how those trends can really amplify and improve a business, um, that's something that we can bring that strategy, not just as Empus, but right. just as any organization. The right co-managed partner. The, r- the right partner, the right technology partner, by integrating the right technology partner, an organization can see tremendous return on investment of that because it's really going to take them from where they're at today. They're going to look at a future state, mm-hmm. and then they're going to understand what that future state could look like. But the only thing limiting them perhaps to that future state or where they need to be might be capacity or knowledge. So being able to bring that as a partner and a partner that you can trust um, is our tremendous benefits to an organization. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Wow, that was uh, that was some pretty amazing uh, information. I totally agree that um, those are areas where we we can certainly benefit and help the organizations that we work with. But organizations are looking for that level of change. Absolutely. When you look at even just escalations, um, so you have you have your internal team. Something might be more complex and um, than f- something they've ever dealt with in the past. Right. They may encounter something tomorrow. Who do they escalate it to? Who do they communicate to? As leadership as well, it's really empowering your team as well to know that they have a partner that they can work with. So regardless if you're going to the cloud or making some transformational changes within the organization, it's always good to have a partner in your pocket, a partner that you can work with Mm -hmm. that your team now knows that your team can reach out to another partner that can work with them to address whatever problem or request that they may face. Mm-hmm. Because what happens is if, if I'm a smaller team in-house, I'm limited to the capabil- I'm limited to the knowledge and capabilities that we have. So if we're dealing with something for the first time 
and I don't have someone that I can reach to, reach out to, that team may feel like they're drowning. Yep. And the the end result may be could be very bad or catastrophic for the organization if they don't act in a timely manner from a cybersecurity perspective, even from a daily operations. Mm-hmm. I've never dealt with something. I'm an IT guy. I've never dealt with something. And it's impacting productivity or my team, a user of right. the organization. Well, who's being impacted? The <laughs> user. The, I mean, well, the whole organization. The whole, all, but for sure, that user is is either struggling alone in silence yeah. or making you know a lot of noise uh, about what they're not capable of doing. But at the end of the day, it's the organization yeah. suffering. So uh, that actually brought me brought up an interesting point that you said that. What what are the risks of doing? Th- this is how we've always done it. What 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 are the risks to an organization of just saying, okay, I, I got a team, I know they're good, I'm wondering if I can get more out there. What are the risks by not exploring those types of alternatives or options? Well, I think, um, I mean, the risk of saying that we've always done it this yeah, way. This is how I mean, you know, done it. you know, you know how my yeah, opinion. That's I mean, taboo. That's, death. that's taboo. Yeah. At our, our, our yeah. this is how we always done it. Stop right there. Yeah, that's death to a company. Right. For anyone who ever would say that, okay, we're doing this process. This is how we've always done it. Yeah, this is how we've always, this is how yeah. we've, all, we've always done it. Yeah, that just keeps you closed minded. It doesn't allow you to really expand, and it it ends up costing an organization a tremendous amount of money and lost productivity and likely even revenue um, because they're just stuck to their own ways. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, if you want change, you need to change. Right. You know, if, talk about that all the time. Yeah, if an organization wants more, they want to do more. At some point, there needs to be a change and being open to looking at other options. Mm-hmm. So again, as we've said, I think we've said it many times today. We love working with internal teams. Absolutely, and Absolutely. some of our best relationships are with internal teams. But when we're looking at it just by we've always done it this way, that's going to limit the organization's growth potential. Yep. And likely, at some point, find them where the risk is unmanageable for them mm-hmm. and they're reactive to a very bad situation. Yep. So just learning more and educating yourself on what else is available is something that you should do regardless of how you've been doing things. I mean, education is key. Learning about new, new things that are happening in market, within your industry, within different trends of technology, these are things that you should always stay uh, educated on so that you can make informed decisions on what may be best for the organization. Absolutely. And you touched on two, two things that, you know, again, um, just come up so frequently. Uh, you know, you have an internal team. They're really great at what they do. They're excellent at, at, uh, at, at the technologies that they know to a point, right? So where is the, where is the overall or overarching, uh, accountability, shall I say around, ongoing training, right? So even in technologies that I understand, we see this happen all the time. We see the technologies that they're supporting, the Cisco, the Microsoft, the um, you know the various platforms, the specialized applications, those are evolving as well. So would you say it's really important to know that the team that is supporting your environment is also interested and dedicated to getting the necessary education, ongoing education and certifications that demonstrate that they understand the change within those those platforms? I mean, absolutely. You know our position on training yes. as an organization. I mean, training and education is so paramount, key paramount. to the growth. Yeah. Um, it needs to be aligned with what the organization needs. But one of the things that often happens within internal organizations, and who's, who's directing the internal um, team? Right. Um, oftentimes that IT team, that team may report to someone who has no, has no <laughs> capability of really even understanding what is the certification or training path look like. Yeah, or ass- assessing the current skill set um, and then also aligning and building uh, an employee maturity model for that person so that they can continue growing within that organization, which in turn would provide more value to the organization. It's like the saying goes – it's training. Oftentimes we hear from organizations and they say, well, you know, we don't want to train the team um, because if we train them, if I train them and give them the certification, well, what oh, yeah. if they leave? Yeah, exactly. Well, it's like, well, the, as you've heard, well, what if I don't train them and they stay? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've, we've talked about that right. a lot. What, what, what's worse? Yeah. So, 
I don't want to train someone because I think they're going to leave because if they get a certification, but what if I don't train them and they stay? Who is being impacted more? The reality is the organization because there's untapped potential of those team members that can drive the organization forward. So technology is very, it's complex. Yeah. Things are evolving very rapidly. Things are changing constantly, mm -hmm. especially with cloud technologies, AI, machine learning, everything. Yeah. Development, software as a service. I mean, there's what just- What the cloud even means. Exactly. So how do you keep your team up to speed with the evolving trends? It's very difficult to do that. Mm -hmm. Technology spans a great deal of um, operational support as well. It's not just, again, it's not the IT guy. He's my IT guy. He yeah. does everything. The reality is it's not. Like mm. I said earlier, compare that to the medical field. Sure. There's specialization. Specializations are absolutely required. There's tremendous risks that organizations are facing. And internal teams are wanting, wanting this type of partnership yep. because – as an internal team, they want more support. Absolutely. They want more support. They want to be able to surround themselves with like-minded individuals that can even help them grow. And that's one of the tremendous benefits that we see from our organization. Right. We're surrounded by like-minded individuals that truly want to grow. They bring technology. They have a passion for that. So if you're limited as an organization by one, two, five, ten, whatever size your team is, just know you can multiply that sure. by working with the right partner that's bringing you that same type of value. And I, I you know, I it's been a great you, this has been a great uh, podcast. I mean, I really I, I love talking shop with you for sure. Um, but what, the one last thing I definitely did want to uh, just jump into and, and dive into is a lot of times businesses are saying, okay, well, what, what's this going to cost me? You know, what is going to be the cost of the organization? Of course, we've already discussed what is the cost of the organization by not doing something like this. But what is the actual cost of the organization compared to do I grow out this team? Um, th the reality is, in many cases, it's a lot less with a lot more to gain. Wouldn't you agree? I would absolutely agree. Um, you know, there's every, every aspect of IT may not be a full-time position, but right. you need that specialization. So if I need someone that's dedicated to, let's just say, risk and compliance, there may only be a certain number of hours that I need that person um, throughout the week or on a given day or over the month or the year. Well, if you're going to try to build that skill set internally, mm -hmm. well, you're going to have a lot of downtime um, of that individual. So that potential, that um, that budget and the potential of what that person could do may be limited because they're... They're more of a specialist. But what they do when they do that compliance or risk assessment, they do a fantastic job at it. Right. They're, they're great at that. So working with a partner that has all these skill sets, you can essentially pick and choose what you want. And when you want it. And when you want it. When you need it. So very elastic. Exactly. And they're there when you need it so that you don't have to scramble when you unexpectedly needed something. Right. Client it's, demands it. Yeah, client demands it. You need you need a risk assessment done. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't have. Let's say I, I'm in leadership. I'm a CEO of another organization, and I need a risk assessment done. Who's going to do it? If I don't have someone with that skill set, I know that if I'm going to try to build that skill set now, it's going to take me a long time. Sure. And you know, with hiring, I mean, and finding the right candidates, I mean, something that all organizations deal with. How do you assess that that person is the right person too? Yeah. So if you have a smaller team and I'm the CEO and I'm not technical and I don't even know what the real scope of it is, how can I even interview you? Right. How can I assess your skill set? Let's say you're applying for that position. How can I interview that skill set? Yeah. I can't. I really can't. To properly yeah. assess it, right? You don't know what it is that is the right candidate versus the wrong candidate. I mean, you said the cloud and I'm like, oh my God, you're an expert. Yeah. Right? And you, you dropped threw, enough acronyms yeah, to make threw, me really believe you, you know what some, you're talking about. Exactly. So um, I, it really, it is much more cost effective for an organization, but it's key to find the right partner. Right. You have to truly do your due diligence, evaluate, look at what they've done. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me what you can do. Tell, show me what you've done. That's so important for an organization when you're doing your due diligence and assessing. What are their capabilities? What are the response times? What's their transparency? Transparency is key. If I have, if I use my systems and an internal team uses their systems, 
and they're not communicating, then we've created now siloed teams. Right. That goes against... And or more complexity than we really needed. And it goes against the philosophy and concept of co-managed. Yeah. Co-managed. We're both managing an environment. You have your responsibilities. I have my responsibilities. And collectively, we now create the best IT program for the organization. I mean, that's, you know, you really hit so many great points. I feel like we could probably go for another hour on this topic because that just spurred five more questions. But I, I, I know we've kind of gotten to the point in, in this. Uh, I really appreciate you uh, including me in this. Yeah. I love these kind of discussions. You know, we're having these discussions all the time with our clients. So, you know, to be able to have that together uh, uh, was awesome. So thank you very much for, you know, including me in this. You know, I'm always asking. I, I love I you know, John was my IT guy. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you got your IT guy. Yeah. You're always my IT guy. And, and uh, what we built at Impist is as a team of like-minded individuals. So very excited to be a part of it. And thank you for including me in this podcast today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you to everyone uh, for joining us today for our Tech 1-2 podcast on co-management. Look forward to seeing you again very soon. All right. Thank you.